Hey everybody, I'm Anmar. I own and operate the Volprof agency in San Diego, California, and today I'm gonna to show you exactly how to create a Facebook ad from start to finish, why displaying your ads on Instagram might be the most profitable thing you can do, why testing an ad with a $5 budget is a terrible idea, how to evaluate and make sense of the results of your test ads, and much, much more. So the first thing you need to do is create a business page. You won't be able to create ads without one. If you're logged into the account that you want to run ads from, you can follow the steps I'll lay out in a second to create a Facebook business page. If, however, you are an agency running ads on behalf of a company, you need to request access from the page owner under an advertiser role. To do so, go to business.facebook.com settings, select your business if you have multiple, then on the left panel, click pages, click the blue add button, select request access to a page, Find the page by searching for its name, then choose the roles you need to operate under and click request access. And now the owner will get a notification about your request and be able to accept it. As for creating a business page, go to facebook.com business. On the top right, you'll find a button that says create an ad. Click the drop down arrow next to it and click create a page. Choose the business or brand page type, otherwise you won't be able to access the data you need to create ads. Next, give your page a name and a category for your business, and click skip on the pictures for now. We'll take care of those in this next step. Your page photo should be the logo of your business, or if it's a personally branded page, a picture of the person. And the cover photo should give a little context about what the page is and who it's for. To quickly make one, go to www.canva.com. In the template section, search for Facebook cover, then select your favorite one and edit the text as much as you need to. When you're done, click the download icon in the top right corner, then go back to your Facebook page and choose the image as your cover photo. Now that you've created a business page, you can advertise. The first thing you need to do, and you only have to do this the first time for each company you advertise for, is install a pixel on their website. A Facebook pixel is a line of code that allows you to track the people who visit a certain website and even certain pages within a website. When you run ads to a web page, you need to know who visited it. Without a pixel, this is impossible. They're gone forever and you have to pay for new ads to get new people to the website. But with the pixel installed, you can create ads only for the people who visited your website, which will be really, really important in more advanced types of advertising. So to create one, go to facebook.com slash business slash a slash set dash up dash Facebook dash pixel. Click create pixel. And from there, Facebook will show you exactly how to install that on the website, depending on what web builder the business is using. And finally, and this is vital, so many marketers don't do this and it kills their effectiveness as an advertiser. Before creating an ad, you need to determine what success looks like with regard to advertising budget, sales, and leads. If you don't do this, you'll be running ads not knowing whether or not they work, which means you won't know which ads to allocate more of your budget to, and more importantly, which ones to stop running. Start with your marketing budget. How much can you afford to pay for the initial round of test ads? The minimum should be $15 per test, paid as $5 per day for three days at the very least. This is because Facebook needs at least three days to optimize your ad. Moreover, $5 per day for three days will allow you to reach 1,000 people. And to make any valid conclusion about whether or not an ad worked, you need to have shown it to at least 1,000 people, kind of like a survey. As for sales, how much revenue do you need out of this campaign to consider it a success? And finally, leads. How much can you afford to pay for a lead and still be profitable? This varies greatly between industries, but it's very important that you come up with those metrics before creating any ads. And now, to create your ad, go to facebook.com slash ads manager, that's A-D-S-M-A-N-A-G-E-R. Click the green create button, and on the left, you'll see three sections, campaign, ad set, and ad. The campaign houses all of the marketing efforts involved with achieving a single objective. For example, get people to visit the open house this Saturday. Ad sets will be the different iterations of the ad with differences in who you target, whether that's location, demographics, or interests, and the placement of your ads or on what platforms they'll be shown. It's very important that you never ever target more than one variable per ad set. Otherwise, you won't know what worked and what didn't, so you'll continue to waste money reaching an audience consisting mostly of people who aren't interested, with a few interested people sprinkled in there. 
It's not uncommon for the successful campaigns we've run to include over 150 different ad sets at least, so remember, create a new ad set for every single variable you test. Finally, the ad section consists of your creative, which are the images or videos you use, and your copy, which is the text of the ad. Starting with the campaign section, here is where you choose your marketing objective. There's a little info icon next to each one that tells you what it's about, but I'll run through them here and give you my thoughts on each one. Brand awareness prioritizes people who are interested in your brand as a whole. This is great if you want to put out branding ads like interesting videos, cool photos, and pretty much anything else that doesn't require a response from the audience. You'll see big brands like Coca-Cola do this a lot. Reach prioritizes volume. If you have a PSA or some sort of message you need to push out to everybody in the area, this is what you would choose. I haven't found much use for it at all though. Traffic is a very popular option. This prioritizes the ad's ability to send people to a certain location digitally, whether that's a website, landing page, or whatever else. Engagement prioritizes responses to the advertisement. That can be in the form of page likes, responses to an event, or claims of an offer. I use event response ads for open houses all the time and they work very well. App installs is what you would choose if you were promoting an iOS or Android application. It makes it really easy for your audience to download the application with just one click. Now video views is one of the most important objectives on here for a couple of reasons. Firstly, it's incredibly cheap in relation to how impactful the act of somebody viewing your video can be. And secondly, this allows you to later create a custom audience comprised of only people who watched a certain percentage of your video. That is by far the best audience you can possibly have, so video views is a great objective to choose. Lead generation is what you would use if you were looking for the contact information of your audience, usually in exchange for a free and valuable offer. This allows you to create a form within Facebook or Instagram that automatically fills their information in, at which point all they have to do to send it to you is click submit, which is a lot easier than typing out their contact information. Conversions will track very advanced actions such as actions taken on a website or in the Messenger app. And this one and the next one are typically used for e-commerce stores. Catalog sales is a specific version of the previous objective and optimizes for sales made from a website, but it allows you to place a few products from your catalog in the ad itself so your audience can browse the catalog while remaining on Facebook or Instagram. And finally, store visits optimizes for your audience visiting a physical location. This is a great way to promote a new restaurant or physical store that opened. Once you choose an objective, you'll be asked to name the campaign. I recommend naming it something specific about the goal you are looking to achieve for the business. For example, if we're advertising a newly listed home, I'll call the campaign, get people to schedule showings for a new listing, and then the date. Moving on to the ad set, this is where you'll set up your various testing variables. Name each ad set after the specific variable you're testing. In our example, I'm going to first test interest in Zillow. I want to know if people interested in Zillow are also interested in scheduling a showing for the property I'm promoting. Zillow is the only interest I will target. If I choose four different interests and get a result, I won't know which interest worked and which three didn't. So I would be forced to keep spending money reaching people of all four interests most of whom don't care about my ad. Here's where it gets a little complex. Even within the ad set targeting only those interested in Zillow, I have to choose an age, gender, and location. To do this properly, I'll create a new ad set for every combination of those things. For this example, I would create the following 12 ad sets to start. Facebook, male, age 25 to 34, interested in Zillow, living in San Diego, California. Facebook, male, age 35 to 44, interested in Zillow, living in San Diego, California. Facebook, male, 45 to 65 plus, interested in Zillow, living in San Diego, California. Facebook, female, 25 to 34, interested in Zillow, living in San Diego, California. And then so on, but then after those six are done, where I do the three age ranges for male and then three for female, I'll go ahead and replace Facebook with Instagram and test out Instagram placement with an ad that's a little more suited for the Instagram screen, meaning a four by five aspect ratio. And then I'll do six of those. So that's the interest in Zillow covered. And so I'll do the same for interest in Trulia, HGTV, Redfin, Realtor.com, etc. 
So it's certainly a lot of work, but this way I can tell exactly what's working and what's not and make the appropriate adjustments. Most advertising videos I've seen online recommend choosing four, five, or even more interests in a single ad set, and it's terrible advice. The data you will receive from campaigns like that is virtually useless. I wrote an article last week about the correct process for testing Facebook ads. If you're interested, you can find it linked on the top right hand corner of this video as well as in the description below or on my LinkedIn profile by searching my full name. That's Anmar Abdul Jawad. A-N-M-A-R-A-B-D-U-L-J-A-W-A-D. And I'm sorry to put you through that. <laughs> but a quick note about ad placements before we move on. I've consistently found Instagram to work as well as or even better than Facebook. My advice here is to rigorously test both with customized ads for each one. Don't select both Facebook and Instagram within the same ad set. Create two versions of each ad set optimized for the respective platform it's shown on. It's also a good idea to check the box under the specific mobile devices and operating systems section marked only when connected to Wi-Fi. This tends to convert better since people not connected to Wi-Fi are likely out and about and don't have the time to look at your ad, even if they would otherwise be interested. As for the budget section, we covered it already earlier, but you want to spend at the very least $5 per day for three days without tampering with the ad set at all. Bigger companies will be able to spend a little more per day and that's great, but $5 per day for three to seven days is the bare minimum. During this time, leave the ads alone completely and let Facebook work its magic and optimize. Moving on to the final section, this is where you'll choose your images or videos and write your headlines and text. If you need some inspiration for this part, there's a neat little Chrome extension called Turbo Ad Finder that lets you see your Facebook feed but only the ads. It's kind of like the opposite of an ad blocker. Alternatively, you can Google examples of ads that performed well in your industry. I can't really say too much about this part because it varies so greatly depending on what you're promoting, but as a rule of thumb, shorter copy works better on Instagram than longer copy, so you might want to keep that in mind. And you're done. So that was very long and comprehensive, but I really hope you got some value out of it. Here are the four most important takeaways. Number one, make sure your website has a pixel installed. Number two, define what a successful ad would be in terms of budget, sales, and leads before you even start. Number three, make sure you let ads run for three to seven days at the very least. And four, only test one variable per ad set. All right, everybody, I hope this was valuable and thanks for watching. Good luck.